This is Cleo. She is inspired to create, collect, preserve, or connect a compelling work of human expression. She can't help it. It's her thing. Cleo's vision for this work is bigger than she can realize herself. To make it live and to continue living over time, she needs people, she needs money, she needs stuff. But assembling these people, this money, and this stuff into a compelling work isn't nearly enough. For the work to be complete, it needs other people to connect with it, bring meaning to it, and release its potential energy into the living world. So Cleo has a puzzle, and she needs to discover its pieces and how they might come together. Cleo could begin this discovery in any direction, but she chooses to explore the production of the work first. It's what she knows best. She asks herself and her close companions what people, money, and stuff she will need to make this work. How will she draw them all together? And how will she get them to focus their energies rather than just mill about and complain? Someone tells her this is called management. As she asks, she discovers that many of her companions and even complete strangers start gathering around her. They share some piece of her vision or have had similar visions themselves. They bring different skills and resources, and they bring a dizzying array of motivations to the task. Some want attention, some want money, some want power, some just want to help Cleo, some love puzzles, some want company, and some aren't entirely sure what they want, but they like the vibe. And so, by contract and coalition and unwritten covenant, they form a collective, and they call it an organization because its purpose is to organize them. Cleo imagines it to be an imaginary box to hold the people, the money, and the stuff they need in one place. They find special ways to count and track the money and stuff in the box, which they call financial management and sometimes finance. Not everything they need can fit in the box, so they find other such boxes. They call these partners and suppliers. They have complex motivations too, as do the people that comprise them. Cleo discovers this all requires yet another set of skills called leadership or collaboration or a bunch of other words, and on they go as best they can. With this constellation around her, Cleo finds she has lots of people, but not much money and stuff, so she wanders in a different direction to see what she can find. She needs other people, remember, to make the work whole, to witness, to respond, to bring their own unique meaning in life. She discovers these other people have different ways of connecting to the world than she does. She learns that translating and connecting these many worlds of meaning is called marketing. Many find the value well worth an exchange for money and stuff. This is exciting to Cleo and useful to her enterprise, but concerning as well. It can't only be people with money and stuff who bring meaning to the work. Deep meaning demands more and different eyes, more and different voices. Again, Cleo has a puzzle. She's assembled a complex and demanding enterprise. She respects the people who have joined her and wants to honor their contribution with at least a little money and stuff. But she and many of her companions also imagine this work as a gift. I wonder, she wonders, if some among all these people might help buy this gift on behalf of their neighbors, might contribute some money and stuff beyond what the transaction demands. She learns this is called development. Many seem willing, but most are wary. Why should they contribute money and stuff to an imaginary box of people, even if they're lovely people? They ask for evidence that the people are truly committed to the cause and not the cash. They ask for written promise that the effort is built for a purpose and not for a profit. So they all agree to another covenant. A group of them will hold the purpose and trust. They will be called trustees. The wider world agrees to create special rules and privileges for this type of imaginary box of people. They call this policy. And since Cleo and her colleagues are not organized for profit, they call this collective a not-for-profit, although that doesn't quite capture the many complex motivations involved. And so it is that Cleo and her colleagues make extraordinary things together, made more extraordinary by the sparks they ignite in others and the energy they bring to the world. They decide to call this whole adventure arts management, and they are elated to discover an extraordinary community at American University, four decades old, where they can master its magic and its craft. <laughs>